Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. Today, we're going to be talking about fruit flies, drain flies, and moths. We'd like to thank Scott Monroe. He's been liking and sharing our podcast. So I, I never thought much about fruit flies except for killing them, like <laughs> working at the hardware stores. But it's pretty wild. In 1910, scientists started experimenting and researching biology with fruit flies. And 75% of the known human diseases have a match in fruit flies. Really? And so they're doing genetic research now for Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, diabetes, and cancer with fruit flies. And in 2000, it was one of the first organisms to have its genome completely decoded. So it's just fascinating. You know, as they as they mess with them, like they'll radiate them or they'll give it all types of different stimuli, and they're able to watch it very easily how the genetics change. So one of the cool research studies I thought is, is pretty wild is in 1954, these biologists started raising colonies of fruit flies in the dark. And so they've been, they've been doing this now for over 60 years. So they wondered how it, they would change genetically because they go through generations so quickly and mm-hmm. you know, they die out so fast. And so they thought it would be like these cave fish where they're pale and blind. You know, they've, they've lost their ability to see. So over the last 60 years, it's the same as 1,400 different generations of these original fruit flies. It would be the same as 30,000 years of human generations. Wow. And so they still have normal eyes, which was surprising to the scientists. But what's wild is they've been compensating for living in the dark by growing these bristles that are extremely long. And there's 4,700 changes in their DNA. Some of them, it helps them break down toxins that regular flies don't have. Right. And so they're studying all this. But they, but the one thing that they thought they'd see is like them losing their eyes. Right. Like 4,700 other things mm-hmm, have mm-hmm. been happening. So it's just really interesting what they're doing with fruit flies. Are we just going to talk about different experiments for fruit flies? I'd like to. It'd be a great episode. <laughs> yeah, I don't think our listeners would like that. But. So in your house for fruit flies, they're called either a pumice fly or a vinegar fly. And pumice re- means the remains of like olives and grapes. And then vinegar fly. So vinegar is a byproduct of fermenting fruit, which is pretty interesting. So there's several different types of fruit flies. And these are some of the smallest flies you're ever going to see in your home. They're about an eighth eighth inch long, usually with red eyes and a tan body, but there's a lot of variation. If you see fruit flies in your house, you really want to control them because one fly can lay more than 500 eggs. And so they can really get out of control in your house. Yeah, super quickly, huh? Yeah, and they're going to lay these eggs in fruit, like, like slowly rotting fruit or any sugary material. They will also lay eggs, though, in any decaying organic matter. They love bananas and alcohol. Mm. Nice combination. Soda. <laughs> they, they found fruit flies laying eggs in wet, mo- wet mops. So if you're mopping your floor and there's tiny food particles in there and you don't clean it thoroughly, they'll lay their eggs in that. Trash cans, recycle bins, drains, garbage disposers, because they, they find, you know, if you have fruit mm-hmm. that you've ground up in there, your cleaning rags, if you don't clean them thoroughly, empty bottles, cans, and what was wild is they had this whole article they were talking about where they saw moist toothbrushes, Ew. How, how fruit flies will lay their eggs there, and these eggs are turning into maggots that are feeding on this organic material, so it, it's pretty good to get rid of them. And not that they really cause many problems with disease or anything with humans, but they do cause your fruit to go bad much quicker. Do you know how excited you sound every time we talk about any type of creepy, (laughs) crawly insect thing? Uh, So the life cycle is about a week long for fruit flies. So how do you prevent fruit flies from coming into your house? So a couple routines. If you clean the produce as soon as you get home and you want to get it out of the bags from the grocery store because there could be fruit flies in that, throw those bags out right away. They recommend that you cover your fruit bowl or store your fruit in the refrigerator because fruit flies, if you bring home a, a, a fruit fly, it's looking for some rotting fruit to lay their eggs in. 
and you want to keep all of your vegetable or meat scraps uh, in your garbage can and outside right away if you've had a problem or if you go to a grocery store where you've seen that in the past mm -hmm. you're probably going to have it again so your meat scraps and your vegetable scraps just throw take them all the way outside get them outside we don't want to give them any place to start laying their eggs again hundreds of eggs they're going to start depositing you, you want know to what's nice now just thinking about that is we got that garden tower that we just did some videos on for right. our youtube yeah. channel right so now all my garden you know my vegetable scraps and everything goes straight into the compost tube yeah it's pretty cool it's so great i don't have to worry about it you know being in the kitchen stinking up my garbage can yeah it's so just as a side note people but, want to learn about fruit flies Jason. Okay. <laughs> so you want to wash all your dishes you want to clear the drains in your sink you never want to leave wet dish rags in the sink you want to make sure you clean them thoroughly because again, it's wild that fruit flies can leave eggs there. You want to clean under and around the dishwasher and stove, and then allow the first inch of the soil in your house plants to dry out before you water them. Because what's wild is fruit flies will, if you saturate your house plants all the time and that soil is damp, mm -hmm. they lay eggs there. And then the last thing is, is you know, make sure that all your screens don't have holes in them. <laughs> What are some ways to kill fruit flies? So you want to catch the adults right away before they start laying eggs. And the 500 an, eggs? Yes, and an easy do-it-yourself trap is just getting some cider vinegar, which they love. Grab a glass or a cup and some plastic, so either a plastic wrap or a plastic bag, a rubber band or some tape, and a couple of drops of liquid soap. So you're going to put about an inch of the cider vinegar into the glass. You're going to put a few drops of liquid soap and that breaks the surface tension because otherwise the fruit flies can kind of just float on the top and skip around the top of it. So that, Jerks. So, so, so that'll grab them and drown them. And then you want to cut some either small slits or take a pen and poke some little eighth inch or larger holes so they can fit in and then they can't get out. And this cider... Because they've drowned. <laughs> right, right. And then the cider vinegar, just the aroma of it, they can't resist it. Hmm. They're drawn to it. So very easy way. And I saw another guy, what he did was he took a, a piece of... So he took a, a, a regular glass, he put some cider vinegar in there, and he just folded up a piece of paper and used a piece of tape to hold it into a cone shape and just a very small opening at the bottom. And he put it into there, into the, the glass just so it lays in there and the, the fruit flies go in and they can't figure out a way to get out. Hmm. So I thought that was kind of cool. And then one of the variations, I guess they really like red wine. Hmm. You know what the recommended do-it-yourself trap was in the 1800s? No. Grab a pint of milk, a quarter pound of raw sugar, two ounces of ground pepper, which, what is attracted to ground pepper? And you mix all this in a saucepan and you simmer it for 10 or 15 minutes and then you pour this into dishes all around the house and they're attracted to it and they get caught in it and drown. Hmm. So if you don't want to make your own do-it-yourself trap during your, I guess, arts and crafts section of your day, um, are there any store-bought stuff we could buy? So there's two very highly rated fruit fly traps. One is by Taro, T-E-R-R-O, and it's called their Fruit Fly Trap. And it's kind of cool. It's a small apple-shaped trap that you fill with their vinegar-based lure. So this thing is completely non-toxic. Well, we did a video and, on it, and I mean, the trap itself is super cute. It looks like a little apple. I yeah, mean, it's nice. It's decorative. I'm yeah. sure until it's filled with fruit flies, <laughs> it's cute. <laughs> Dead carcasses laying on the solution. Yeah. This lasts 30 days, and then you just throw it out. Then Safer, S-A-F-E-R, they have a houseplant sticky steak. And this is for inside and out, and it's an interesting little thing. So it has plastic stakes with little clips on it, and then they give you these sticky strips that you fold over. It, so it's kind of like fly ribbon? Right, and it has a natural attractant. Again, no pesticides, and this will attract fruit flies, black and white flies. You can put it into little potted plants inside your house, or you can just set it in something. But again, it does a very nice job of attracting once they're filled on top of this little strip. You just throw it away. The next type of small fly that you can have in your house are drain flies. And these are real tiny like fruit flies. They're only about an eighth of an inch long, sometimes called moth flies or filter flies, usually found in drains. And they're very hairy looking. Their wings almost come out like a V shape. The larvae are very hardy and they can thrive in the slime that build up in drains. 
and they can tough out hot water, soap, and almost everything else that we pour in our drains. You're so, kidding. Yeah, just very interesting. That's but, going to be very disappointing to my mom. <laughs> yeah, they're hardy, man. Because she, when she sees any kind of fly or ants or anything, she always pours hot water. She put boiling water down the drain, right. and then she'll pour bleach. And that can kill the adults. But what's interesting is they found through research that when you pour water like that down, there's tiny little bubbles that form, and the larva will actually get into those bubbles hmm. and survive. Wow. So, yeah, very interesting. So they're breeding primarily in drains, sewers. They'll, they breed like crazy in septic tanks. Soil with organic material in it, so if your dog's using the bathroom outside. Damp soil, so in potted plants, and in the garbage disposal. And they lay their eggs in mass groups of 30 to 100. Oh, 30 to 100, that's nothing. <laughs> Talk to the fruit flies, 500 at a time, bam! <laughs> What's interesting about drain flies is when you crush them, they turn into just a little black powder, so it's pretty wild. Do you spend a lot of time crushing yeah, drain flies? Yeah, fascinating, yeah. <laughs> How do you kill drain flies then? So one do-it-yourself method is pouring boiling water or take vinegar and boil it and put it down your drain. But because the larva is so hardy, this is something that you've got to do consistently. So you start out doing it at least every week, and then as you see a reduction, then you can drop down to once a month, they're saying. Hmm. You can also put sticky tape. That's a lot of vinegar. <laughs> yeah, really, really. <laughs> but the vinegar will actually break down, you know, bacteria, and it'll start breaking down that buildup mm -hmm. inside the drain. So it's not a bad thing you to put down. You have the cleanest drains on the block. Yeah, there you go. You can put tape, the sticky side down, over your drain covers and cut small slits in there so it's going to move a little bit of air. And this is going to catch them as they mature and, and start to fly. And it also gives you a way to monitor it. Now, for an effective way to eliminate the breeding ground, better than vinegar is a bacterial... Something's better than vinegar? Yes, <laughs> and, and there's a couple very highly rated drain cleaners that, that are all natural, non-toxic. They use microbes to completely eat away all that biofilm, and so there's nowhere for the flies to lay their eggs. Mm -hmm. So one that's highly rated is called Invade, and it's capital I-N, capital V-A-D-E, BioDrain. And this uses microbes and citrus oil. And so they want you to put an ounce every week down into all of your drains. And that's over time going to slowly remove the buildup. Mm -hmm. And then Robic, we've talked about them before on a couple podcasts. It's R-O-E-B-I-C. And they have an amazing group of bacterial drain cleaners. Completely non-toxic, and they have a couple that were very highly rated for drain flies. One is their garbage disposal cleaner and deodorizer, and this is going to break down grease, food particles, odor, and you can use this in your garbage disposal. You can use it in all the drains around. And then mm -hmm. they have their drain and trap cleaner. And again, this is all bacteria. They have a granule and a liquid version. And this is going to not only keep your drains open, so you don't right. worry about slow drains, but it's going to not give these sewer flies anywhere for them to lay their eggs. So it's so kind of a, a nice way to kind of two-in-one thing. So this is the one that I use. I don't have a garbage disposal on my sink, but I just throw this down for, you know, any particles and food particles that get down there. Right. And it does an amazing job. Yeah, once a month. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing. Some of the old houses we used to work on, when we would cut out sections of pipe, the buildup over the years is amazing. You know, you'll take an inch and a half pipe and, I mean, the hole in the center right. is maybe the size of your finger. But if you do this regularly, put a little down every month, it'll slowly eat away. So you're going to have, you know, much better moving drains. And then another highly rated cleaner is Unique. It's U-N-I-Q-U-E. And their Super Digested was rated very high. And this is recommended to be put down a small amount weekly until you eliminate your sewer fly problem. Now, if you're just looking for a spray to spray down your drains, one that was rated very high is from Fox Farm. That's F-O-X Farm. And it's called Don't Bug Me. And this you can use inside and out. You can use it actually in the garden. And it the main ingredient is pyrethrum. So this is derived from that chrysanthemum flower. You can actually use this up to the day of harvest on your fruits and vegetables. And then really? wash it off. Yeah, pretty wild. What's nice about the pyrethrums is they don't persist in the soil. So it doesn't really hang around in the environment. Deadly to insects. In fact, the um, chrysanthemum flowers were traded on the silk root from 200 B.C. to 200 A.D. because it was just 
a very easy insect killer for, for people to use. And that's wild is the French soldiers would crush these flowers and put it all over their body to control fleas and body lice. Wow. <laughs> that's pretty wild, huh? Mm-hmm. Lice, they feed on human blood and they're the size of a sesame seed, but it caused, especially, this is like during the Napoleonic Wars, it caused such severe scratching that they would create open wounds that would get infected. And a lot of these soldiers were dying just from body lice. Wow, that's a bad way to go. Yeah, <laughs> terrible. <laughs> well, you should say with the py- pyrethrums that they're toxic to cats. Yes, yeah, so very low toxicity to everything else, but it can be toxic well, to cats. Except insects and cats. <laughs> right, and fish. <laughs> <laughs> Are we ready to talk about moths yet? I'm ready. You know what I don't like about moths? The famous bat suit worn by Adam West from the 1966 Batman series. Mm-hmm. They had his bat suit was in storage. And it was destroyed by moths and mice. Wow. You think they would have been able to, able to afford a better storage yeah, unit? Yeah, you'd think so, right? <laughs> <laughs> so there's fossil evidence that moths are over 195 million years old. That's pretty old. And, and there's one type of moth that produces silkworms. And the silk so that's the only cool kind of moth? Yeah, th- yeah, this is the only one that impresses me. And <laughs> this has been raised by the Chinese for thousands of years. And they were experts at keeping it, these alive and creating silk. And it was a very closely guarded secret for, for again, thousands of years. They learned how to keep these ti- pinpoint tiny eggs at around 65 degrees. Over a period of time, they would slowly increase it to around 77 degrees. And when they hatch, these worms, they would feed them every 30 minutes on hand-picked mulberry leaves. Wow. Is that crazy? And then they would stack this on trays. And there were a couple of diaries. I was reading this one article. They said that a room full of these tiny little worms, it sounded like heavy rain. That's how loud these tiny (laughs) worms are eating these mulberry leaves. And then they grow for about a month, and then they spend three or four days creating this silk cocoon. So they're spinning this web, basically. Mm -hmm. And in eight or nine days later, this cocoon is ready to be unwound. So it looks like a big cotton ball, this cocoon. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. They figured out that you could hand unroll this cocoon, and it creates a filament that's about that averages between 1,000 and 3,000 feet long. Wow. I mean, mind-boggling. So do you think it was like some guy that was just bored? Or <laughs> like, I, yeah, I wonder what this is. <laughs> you go. What else you got to do thousands of years ago, right? <laughs> so two of the moths that are usually in a house is the pantry moth and a clothes moth. Uh, the pantry moth, it's a, usually about a half an inch long, gray in color, but it can vary. They lay about three to 400 eggs, and the wow. larva can live on tiny, tiny scraps of food. They like cereal, grain, dried fruit, bird food, um, nuts, pet food, crackers. And what you'll see so in your... So anything that leaves crumbs, basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they're a problem in your pantry because they'll, you know, they'll infest the, your food, your packaging. And then as they're spinning these, their web, like once, once it's a larva, they create this sticky, smelly web that it gets into your food stuff. So we, we want to get rid of them. Yes, because that's disgusting. <laughs> yeah. So so the first step in your pantries, if you, if you see a problem with pantry moths, and they're kind of long, thin, winged, you know, they're very narrow looking, you want to clean up and inspect everything for webbing. You want to wipe down everything, take the shelves off. You want to use a vacuum with a HEPA filter. So that's H-E-P-A, and that stands for High Efficiency Particulate Air Filter, or some some companies call it a particulate arrester. Duh. And, you know, it's going to capture things so small that it actually grab the eggs, where anything else, any other type of filter, it just won't. The, The eggs are too tiny. We want to wash everything down. Anything that has any of this webbing on it or anything that looks like it's chewed on the corners, you want to just get rid of. And then... You have to be diligent with just staying after it. Primarily, the best way to control moths in the pantry are with the sticky traps. Right. We talked about taro and safer. They also have pantry moth traps. So taro's is called the pantry moth trap. And this is a sticky trap, completely non-toxic. It uses this little pheromone attractant. 
and you stick it on the inside of this trap and this will draw moths to it for three months mm -hmm. and then you just throw it out which it's nice because it's a covered sticky trap right so not like a glue trap for, for like mice you know it's covered you're not gonna have to worry about anybody sticking their hands in it or anything right and then safer theirs is called the pantry pest trap and this again uses a pheromone completely non-toxic very easy to use Along with the sticky traps, I would use diatomaceous earth in all the cracks and crevices. Completely non-toxic. This is the fossilized remains of hard-shelled algae. So it's microscopic, razor-sharp little particles that cut up the exoskeleton and kills bugs. Hmm. And then I read a little bit on some of the natural repellents for pantries like cloves and thyme and rosemary. And it's really debatable. There's a lot of people that say it's effective, but you know, then there's other research evidence that says that it's it's marginal mm -hmm. in its effectiveness. But one thing that they said was fairly effective was taking Wrigley spearmint gum out of the wrapper and putting it around the pantry, and pantry moths don't seem to like it. That's hilarious. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> what do we need to know about clothes moths? Besides, like, the Batman story. <laughs> so the, it's the larva that's feeding on clothes, carpets, the bristles and brushes. They had a, a big problem in this piano factory where they were eating the wool felt pads on the piano. Wow. They like fish food, wool, fur, silk, and hair. Mm -hmm. They're usually about a half inch long, yellowish, but there's a, a variety. They like the dark. So most insects are attracted to light, mm -hmm. but not the clothes moth. They lay 40 to 50 eggs, and <laughs> and their their lifespan is about six months. Wow, six months? Yeah, interesting, huh? So if you see moths in your closet, you need to inspect to see if they, you see any of the larvae. And they carry this little silken case, or it's a tube, around with them. So you're looking for that, and you need to clean all of your clothes. If you have clothes that you can wash, you want to make sure that you're washing them 20 to 30 minutes in hot water that's over 120 degrees. And then any of your delicate clothing, you need to get it to a dry cleaner, and that's mm -hmm. going to kill the moths and the, the larva. Now, if you're looking for a spray, you can use anything that has permethrin in it. So these are recommended for clothing. It doesn't harm the fabric. It kills about 55 different insects very low in toxicity to humans. This is what they use in the military on their tents and on their clothing. So it protects you against mosquitoes and ticks. Really good for outside. In fact, some of the sporting goods stores carry a very highly rated product. It's called Sawyer, S-A-W-Y-E-R, permethrin clothing insect repellent. Mm -hmm. And this is the synthetic version of the pyrethrums. We talked about the chrysanthemum based right. products. Yeah, so they do a very nice job. So I would say, you know, if you're having a problem and you want to use a spray, I would use something with permethrin in it. You can also put diatomaceous earth in all the cracks and crevices. So and with then, the spray, though, it's, is that toxic to cats as well? Yeah, any of, any of the versions, uh, natural and sy synthetic, depending on the type of cat, it can be toxic. So you always need to be careful when you're using this around cats. And fish. And fish. <laughs> And then if you want to use a moth trap, you can get something with the pheromones in it. So one that was rated very high for clothes was Pro Pest Clothes Moth Trap. And this was completely non-toxic. Then one thing I would never use to kill moths are mothballs. That makes sense. And they do a great job of killing. Mm -hmm. But the problem is the fumes are so highly toxic that you'd mm -hmm. never want to use mothballs inside your house. They've done a lot of research on animal testing, and it causes cancer in animals. And there's been a few cases of infants who have died from concentrated exposure to mothballs. That's terrible. Yeah, so just never use mothballs in the house. Do you have anything else to add? I would say for fruit flies, the vinegar traps do a really nice job. For sewer flies, I would probably start out weekly with some type of bacterial cleaner for all of my drains. And then as you see them decrease, go to once a month. For moths, I would use some type of sticky trap that has a pheromone attractant. All right, so let's wrap this up. You can subscribe to our podcast on iTunes or Stitcher. 
If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe there as well. You can email us at our email address. At our email address? You can you can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. I'm like really bad at the end of this. <laughs> Just the end? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, let me know. Send me an email. Let me know how I do the rest of this podcast. Oh, thank you for listening. Talk to you next week. Deep, 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 deep